Despite the many challenges facing the nation, there is hope for Nigeria to recover and become a country to be proud of. This is the optimism expressed by Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, and the President of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, at the Interdenominational Church Service for Nigeria's 64th Independence Anniversary, held at the National Ecumenical Center in Abuja. They believe that the federal government's policies for Nigeria's recovery will eventually yield the desired fruits. Arise News correspondent, Charles Eruka, reports. Of Nigeria's independence anniversary celebrations on Tuesday, the 1st of October, leaders of the country gather at the National Christian Center to pray for the country as it marks 64 years of nationhood. Drawn from the executive, judiciary, legislature, and the armed forces, they are also joined by former President Olusegun Obasanjo and other patriotic Nigerians. The Archbishop of Abuja Methodist Church, Nigeria, delivers the message of hope entitled, Guard Our Past, Inspire Our Future, anticipating a nation rising from its ruins. Even though today we are bedeviled with several challenges, bedeviled with economic uncertainty, ethnic and religious tension, corruption, insecurity, devaluation of our naira, unemployment, the Jaffa syndrome, hunger in the land, and hyperinflation. I equally have a dream that this nation, Nigeria, will be great again. I have a dream that Nigeria will rise again. I have a dream that Nigeria will be the best center for industrialization in Africa. The dream of a better Nigeria is echoed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, who is the chief host of the event. Fertilizers, which are critical inputs, was sent across the country to help in ensuring that uh, we have a harvest this year. The armed forces on top of the security situation. If you observe what is happening today, many, many of these bandits are taken out. They are on the run, and there is no hiding place. And of course, CNG, more CNG vehicles are coming in. There is hope. I have a dream to that this country. And that's what you know. it's going to be the most blessed, the most successful, the most prosperous in, the, in Africa and the world. The reason for the optimism is enunciated by the President of the Senate, who represented the special guest of honor, Nigeria's First Lady, Oluremi Tinubu. He puts it down to the President's reforms driven by the legislature. The Petroleum Industry Act, the PIA, aims to transform our oil and gas sector bring about transparency and profitability to that industry that will pay for and benefit all Nigerians. The Finance Act, which introduces progressive tax reform, creating a federal system for economic growth, the benefits will soon be very obvious. Our journey to becoming a prosperous nation is just beginning, and I urge each and every one of you to be patient, to hold on to hope, and to believe that change is not only possible, The service rounds off with a benediction from the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria. Nigeria will be marking a 64th independence anniversary on Tuesday, the first day of October 2024. Today, leaders of the nation of the Christian persuasion gathered here at the National Ecumenical Center to pray for the nation. And the overriding theme is that there is hope that Nigeria will be great again. Even though the times may be difficult, and even though the policies of the government may be challenging, and there is difficulty in dealing with the situation, but with time, and with the grace of God, and with the prayers of the people, and with faith, Nigeria will rise to take her place among the Committee of Nations in the not too distant future. From the National Ecumenical Center, Abuja, Charles Eruka, Arise News. Right on the eve of Nigeria's 64th 
Independence Anniversary, Rafai. We hear very positive words of hope from some strategic leaders in the country. Are you feeling hopeful today? Uh, I have a dream, and I've always had a dream, that this country is going to measure up and do well, and even going to be a beacon of hope to the world. I have a dream that Nigeria has immense realization of its potential. I see Nigeria, and this was said, I think it was by Napoleon, many years ago before China emerged. Napoleon Bonaparte, Bonaparte did say that China is a sleeping giant, that when it wakes, it will shake the world. And I also believe that Nigeria is that sleeping giant, that when it wakes, it will shake the world. But you see, the thing about dreams, they are good, but reality is even better. The problem is, the reality is banditry. Band explain on TikTok and protesters being arrested. Division, propelled and started by our founding fathers. And it has led us to this time. Wars of division everywhere. People being told that have lived all their lives in Lagos that they're not from here because of politicians and elections. People being divided across political lines. And in other parts of the nation, people being told that you're not from the north, you're not from the south, go back to where you're from. Because it's across board. The reality is dark. That the president didn't think through it before he pulled out subsidy. And he also went ahead to devalue the currency. I was part of those that championed subsidy remover because of the corruption. But before you pulled out subsidy, you should have checked the corruption in the system. Then, you cannot pull out subsidy and also float the currency to strangulate the people, to destroy their prospects. We see a country that has a fiscal problem and a lot of deficit, but the budget is still being padded. Just imagine the revelations of budget. How can the Ministry of Oceanography be buying Kekemarua for people? How can the National News Agency be buying Kekemarua? That's tricycles or rickshaws for people. How can other ministries of government be involved with all sorts of frivolous projects? So Senator Nigi was right. You have a Senate as a rubber stamp. You have politicians with a lot of cases of corruption. Ricks up to the higher boots. You have an NMPC that has not been able to tell us what is going on as regards how much fuel we are consuming. So with all the dreams I have, I'm also seeing the reality. But you see, the bridge between the dreams I have and the reality of Nigeria, what will take Nigeria from this bad reality we have to the good dreams we have will be leadership. And that's why Nigerians must not vote in bad leaders, must not support evil because they are from their ethnic groups. So this is the time we need to tell ourselves the truth. Because as we speak today at 64, Nigeria is crippled. The leg is suffering from arthritis. The hand is suffering from bone failure. The eyes is suffering from vision glaucoma. The brain is suffering from early onset of Alzheimer's. But you know what? We can re-engineer the body of Nigeria and bring in a redemption by having a holistic stem cell to be able to revive the body system of Nigeria and make Nigeria better. Are we ready? Are we ready? That's the question, Dr. Abati. Okay, you know, first, uh, congratulations to Nigeria at 64. If you give birth to a child, you know, 64 years ago, by now that child is supposed to have certain, you know, attributes, including maturity, some level of wisdom, and will be expected to have achieved certain things in life, except that child is, uh, you know, an effulifu you know, uh, uh, an unsuccessful uh, person. So at 64, Nigeria, I think that, you know, this is the fourth anniversary of our independence calls for sober reflection. And it is as follows, apart from congratulating Nigeria, number one is a statement made yesterday by uh, Senator Goswil Akpabio. By the way, I saw one newspaper say, say uh, Senator Goswil Akpabio was standing in for the first lady. No. He was not standing in for the first lady. He was there in his bona uh, fide de facto capacity as number three, 
you know, a citizen of Nigeria, the president and the vice president being both Muslims. Those are the people we voted for. Yeah. So uh, it's a misnomer, it's a, a mis, uh, you know, a case of misreporting for any newspaper to say he was standing in for Senator Oluremi Tinobu. He was there as number three. And the point that he made is about optimism. He was expressing the hope that, well, our path may be bumpy, but uh, Nigeria will get there someday. He restated the message about renewed hope, uh, which is what this government has always been saying. But the major point that I think Senator Akpabio made that resonated with me was the point he made about the resilience of the Nigerian. I think that if we were to choose man of the year or person of the year or subject of the year, it should be the Nigerian who has been very resilient. Senator Akpabio used the phrase, the indomitable spirit of the Nigeria. It's a miracle how Nigerians still manage to smile and dance and party every weekend, despite the hardship yeah. that they are saddled with. And I think that that's an important message, is the Nigerian that we should celebrate. And the whole purpose of this celebration is about that Nigerian. Number two is that I see that across the country, at the federal level, at the state level, there is a lot of uh, celebration week long. They should be careful how they celebrate. This should not become an opportunity for certain government officials to feed fat because they are celebrating 64th anniversary. The ordinary Nigerian people, I don't know whether we are celebrating. We are just saying, well, thank God we have survived this far. Number two, or whether is the third point, is the point made by uh, Senator George Akume, the secretary to the government of the Federation. He again told the same line as Senator Akpabio, but but he called for hope also, and he asked for the support of uh, uh, President Olusha Gombasanjo for this administration. Well, it's okay for a government to ask for support, but will President Obasanjo support the administration? What kind of support, actually, is he asking for? Finally, what I'm reminded of on this occasion of the 64th anniversary of uh, Nigeria's independence. It's a 1998 book, 392 pages, written by Professor Eosa Osage, currently the uh, Director General of the Nigerian Institute of uh, you know, uh, International Affairs at the NIA. He wrote, Crippled Giant, the story of Nigeria's uh, since independence. So Nigeria is truly, as Professor Osage pointed out in 1998, a crippled giant. As another person wrote, I've forgotten the name of that professor now, a giant with the key feet of clay. How do we make sure that this potential giant rises? That is the challenge, not the parties that will be held. All right. Uh, I think, yes, I'm going to start this morning by applauding the resilient spirit of the Nigerian people. Despite all that has gone on and the fact that the cost of living has gone astronomically high, a lot of people are struggling to make ends meet. Still, daily, Nigerians rise up and just try to ensure that they are able to keep body and soul together and not give up. So when it comes to hope and renewed hope, I must say that the giver of hope in most cases are the Nigerian people who have to give themselves pep talks sometimes to stand up and against all odds still achieve. For small business owners who against all odds ensure that their businesses are still running and they're still able to maintain the employment of a significant number of the labor market in Nigeria. Kudos to everyone out there who is still keeping the hope alive despite prevailing economic issues. I just say this, tomorrow hopefully we'll hear from the president where if he would give an Independence Day address. And some of the things I would like to hear beyond the usual rhetoric is just a message of hope that details why people should be hopeful. Some of the things and interventions to address the continuous suffering of the Nigerian people despite the many complaints and agitations and even protests by the people themselves. So let's hear what he's going to do and see whether he would, would then hear finally about the conditional cash transfers, the updates on what had been done prior in terms of the distribution of um, agricultural fertilizers, tons of food to different, and uh, the bags of rice to different states. Let's get a bit of a sense of the impact of that. Because the first thing a number of Nigerians are saying is, sort out the issue of hunger, first of all. We are hungry. We cannot even begin to think of productivity as a nation if people are not even able to eat. 
education. What's the hope for the young people in Nigeria? It would be great to hear what the young people think and how they feel about the way that their country is being run currently. Can we hear about interventions in that area? Can we raise up the spirit of the Nigerian right from the youth? I think it's really important to do that. Beyond that, are the day-to-day -day small business owners and the interventions for the MSME um, industry in Nigeria, what is the um, provisions for them? What are the provis provisions for them? It is important for us to hear real interventions as opposed to the usual rhetorics. Nigeria, congratulations. We cannot do anything but keep hope alive. But the most important thing is that may the hope not wane by the actions of our leaders. And so we're hoping that the leaders, by action, will restore the true hope and the spirit and the resilience of the Nigerian people. It's really important. But I mean, they will say we'll, we'll hear a lot of messages tomorrow from subnationals at national level. But the most important thing is that talk is cheap. Action is what people really want.